Never prepared completely. See all the dust coming out of that? That means I haven't used it for a while. So I've tasted, I've tested it. Not tasted it. I've tested this. Now, uh, brands of wash. I have like an itch. I have some cheap brushes over here. Why is this here? Seriously, why is this here? Why are you here? <laughs> it's embarrassing. I, I have plans on going and investing in some gouache brushes. Let me start this again. Hi guys, I'm back again. And as promised, this week I wanted to talk to you about gouache. So let's jump into it. So gouache, a lovely, fantastic, brilliant medium. Definitely my favorite. Gouache is a water-based medium that is sort of like watercolor, or I should say it is the chalky version of watercolor. So what we have is a very opaque medium compared to watercolor, which is a very transparent medium. So what happens is gouache allows you to do layering and to actually apply lighter accents as you layer up. Whereas with watercolor, you can't really add white to it. You can, however, it wouldn't really do the same effect as gouache would. that I use for gouache usually is the kind of paper that is, well, in my case, at the moment, I'm using a paper that works for mixed media, so you could use graphics and paints on it, but it is predominantly the type of paper that works for watercolor, as in, if you do use water-based paint, you know, that means that you would be adding a lot of water to the medium, and so your paper will buckle. So the thicker the paper is, preferably with some sort of sizing on top of it, the better. But for the moment, this is the kind of paper that I'm using. When you buy paper, make sure that it says on it, acid-free. That's the best paper to invest on. Also, it has to have a certain, as I said, thickness to it. So mine is 250 grams. That's not too bad. to you as long as you have enough space to mix on and so me I have an open palette <laughs> don't look at this this is from an acrylic project that I've that I've designated this area only for acrylics <laughs> so <laughs> do not mix your videos guys you don't want contamination it doesn't work well trust me it's just a regular plastic palette you can find them cheap at any arts and crafts shop so 
Now, I have one of these. This is my watercolor palette, and again, I've designated palettes for each medium. I'm not mixing them. This is good because it allows for the paint to remain probably wet for a little bit longer than an open palette. Again, must check on that. But I would say if you're looking for ways to preserve your paint from drying on your palette, stick it in the fridge or ask the local art shop what ways there are. Because I personally don't mind it drying because I can always put some, spray some water on it and just get back to work as easily as ever. So it doesn't bother me, but that's up to you. Everybody's got their own preferences. Has that been on my shoulder this whole time? Why didn't you tell me? a lot with brushes and I've gathered them from my acrylics and my watercolor brush jars. <laughs> However, I would say designate brushes for each medium. As long as you buy a brush that is for a water-based medium, you will be fine. What you have to consider is that watercolor brushes are very soft. See how very fine the hair of this brush is? What happens is this is actually made to carry a lot of water which is what you want for watercolors. Uh, same goes for this brush, same goes for this brush, made for watercolor. I would not recommend you use watercolor brushes for gouache because you will have issues with carrying thicker paint across the paper. You don't want to carry as much water as you layer up your gouache, so the brushes that you need to use are the more kind of acrylic brushes, meaning they have a more firm kind of hair to them so this is actually made to work with a thicker medium it's made to be able to spread it across the paper with no problems same goes for this now again both of these could go for watercolors as well it's just gonna be a specific technique that is probably not the most traditional watercolor technique but it's a more glazing technique but still work for all water-based medium So if you've worked with acrylics, for example, you know that once acrylics is set, as in dry, that's it. There's no altering it. It's dry for life. Whereas gouache, actually, just like watercolor, can be replenished. So as soon as you add water to it, it would be altered again and you are free to use it. Of shadows and tones on the skin for example which is what I'm doing right now that are a little too harsh there are ways to blend it but you do kind of have to work the brush you need to be considerate as to how much water your brush is carrying and possibly how much paint your brush is carrying now one of the downsides of gouache guys is that when it's wet the color is different than when it's dry this is the 
thing about gua sha, you kind of need to give it a chance and you need to work with it a little bit. And the hand gets a little more confident with time. And so you work with it until you're comfortable with it. And eventually you will also know how your color will dry. Depending on what background your color is against and how much water your brush carries, it will probably dry lighter. Just, it all depends. It all depends on the situation. But keep that in mind when you start working with gloss. Now I do know that acrylics dry darker. One of the reasons why many people love oils is because wet to dry, they stay true to the color. So yeah, I do appreciate that about oils, but I personally seem to click with gouache much more than with oils. I like oils, however, they're not my preferred medium but since I've discovered gouache. Brands of gouache, Daler Roni. So that was my first gouache, and it was my first gouache because it was on the more affordable side. It came with all the basic colors inside and uh, spectrum yellow, flame red, ultramarine, burnt umber, and lamb black. Oh, and of course, your, is it titanium white? Permanent white, it says. And I started to buy tubes individually. I started packing up on greens and more white. White would be the first color that goes, so make sure that you load up on that once you've established that you want to marry gouache. So yeah, there is Winsor Newton, which is the series that I've got next. There are more on the pricey side. Now I can't speak about prices because they have different countries, different situations. About this particular portrait is that it consists of both warms and cools and they really play off each other and they're really pleasant for the eye. See how beautifully it blends? If you have the patience for it and you work enough, you can make this about as realistic as it as pain allows. This is where you start to feel when your brush is thirsty, it gets a little scratchy, so in situations like these where you have hair or some sort of texture, like grass or some weeds that requires texture, a drier brush is a good approach, but Places where you want to smooth it down, you have to give it more water. Oh, see, now that's a big problem because we have light here and we have shadow here, and now I don't know how to fix it. So, as I said in my previous video, this is what happens on a regular basis, so I can't. Uh... I need a cloud, please! Ah, oh, no, you ruined my set! Come on, son! consistency in the look, that's where you go in with the glazing brush. Uh, there are varnishes that you can use if you would like to preserve 
your final piece. With a watercolor medium, and it is a varnish that once you apply on your final piece, after you're done, you know, painting it, it will preserve it from moisture and water drops. So it's something to consider if you are working with gouache regularly and you want to sell them. There you go. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you found this material usable, if you learned something new today. Let me know in the comments below if I've missed mentioning something uh, and you have learned something through your own experience. It would be great to share people's experience there um, so everybody can learn. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and do subscribe for more videos. So I will see you next week. Bye!